Hello and welcome. I'm publishing after a long time. I, I hope you're still here and working hard. Last few years has been really crazy. Uh, I was too busy working really hard, but now I have some time and I've learned a lot of things. So I'm, I'm planning to make a lot of videos. So glad to be back. But today we are going to talk about ES2022 features. There are some exciting features uh, are there in ES2022, which is already mostly released. And uh, the ES2023 is uh, look, looking interesting. So if you wait till end, I'm gonna also show you what are the, some new features that are coming in ES2023. So welcome to Taxi Tutorials. The first feature is class private instance fields. So fields, class fields are public by default, which means you can call any property directly on the object from outside, right? Uh, so it needed a, a way to have a private property. So this feature is all about that. So let's look at a simple example. So let's take a look at a very basic example to understand this. I'm a big fan of basic examples. So without any bells and whistles. So here I've created a class called counter and I've, I've defined a, a public class field i equal to zero. By, by default, all class fields are public, right? Uh, and then uh, in JavaScript, and then we, we have a method called print, which access this property using this dot i and prints it. It's a simple class, right? Now let's create an instance of this class. So I'm gonna call it const c, uh, equal to new counter, right? So um, C is an, an instance of this class. And let's call print on it. So if I say C dot print and run this, it would print zero, right? I can also access I directly. So if I say console log C dot I and run this, I can still access uh, I directly outside the class, right? Uh, because this is public, I'm able to do that. Uh, but in ES2022, they have introduced uh, private class fields. And in order to achieve that, all you have to do is prefix your property name with pound sign. So if I say pound i, this becomes private. Uh, not only that, I have to, whenever I try to access it, I have to use a pound side as well. So if I wanna access this here, I have to use a pound side here as well, right? So now if I try to use this here and see if I run this, let's see what happens. It says um, private field must be declared uh, in an enclosing class, right? So it's not letting it do that. So, but I can, if I simply run print, right? Actually, I should not have a console log otherwise because console log doesn't return anything. So if I just do c.print, uh, it would print i equal to zero. So this is private class field. It's an interesting solution, I like it. In languages like Java, they have a, a private keyword, but here, this is JavaScript. Uh, we are innovative here, so pound sign would suffice. All right, the next feature um, of ES2022 is private class methods. Just like we have private class fields, uh, the methods can also be private. For example, if I wanna make this method print private, um, I can do that. Uh, but what does it mean to be a private method? Uh, it's the same thing. For example, here I can access uh, c.print, right? Uh, so once I make this private, I cannot call it directly. So let's make this private by adding pound sign. So now this is a private met method, uh, which right now is accessing uh, private uh, property, i. So if I run this, well, right now it says C print is not a function because there's no such function as C print. There is a pound print, right? So if I add a pound sign here and run it, 
it would say, uh, similar to previous example, it would say private field pound print must be declared in an enclosed class. Okay, so how to fix this? So private methods can be called by other public methods uh, or private methods within the class, right? So let's say uh, I create public print method. And what this method would do is this method would call uh, print method which is private. And then instead of calling print method, I'm going to call it public print method, right? And I get zero, which means it's accessing this I equal to zero. So now we have encapsulation, at least some sort of encapsulation in JavaScript. Okay, so the next feature in ES2022 is not class related. It's array related. It's called relative indexing method. So let's create an array first. So I'm going to create an array called nums, which is holding a bunch of numbers, right? And typically, I can access elements of this array using um, index. So if I want to access, let's say, first element, I would say nums zero to access the first element. But what if I want to access the last element, which is five? In that case, I would need to know the length of the array. So the way to access this, I would say nums dot length minus one. And this would give me the last element of this array. So let's console log this. And I would get five. And if I want to get the second last element, I would have to say length minus two, and that would give me four. So what if I want to, uh, I have some example, but I want to start from, from the back of the array. Uh, is there a, a simple mechanism where I can say, oh, give me the last array, last element of the array, right? Without calculating the length of the array. Uh, it would be nice if I can simply do this, right? But this is not possible because um, JavaScript, there is no negative indexing. Even if you have negative index, uh, it would store as a string property, which we're not going to go into it. Uh, so how do we do that? So in ES2022, JavaScript introduced a new method called at. And this is where you can provide minus one. Minus one means the last element. So now if I run this, you will have five, right? And minus two will be the second last element, which is four. And so and so forth. So now you can actually uh, get the elements from the back of the array without uh, finding out the length of the array. Maybe just a little bit makes things a little bit simpler. Obviously, you can live without this feature, but it's nice to have. The next feature of uh, ES 2022 is a method call, an object method call has own. Now, you probably have heard or used a method called has own property, which is a prototype method. Uh, so this is pretty much the same thing, um, but the improvement to that, that method. Okay, so I have a simple object called some object, and it has a property called some property, which has a value called something. Now, if I wanted to know if this object has a property called some prop, uh, I can use the the old method called has own property. So, the way uh, I have to use is I would have to call the object itself and there'll be a prototype method call has own property and then this is where i would pass the name of the property call some prop and it would check if this property exists inside this object uh, the, the reason it's called has own property is uh, what if this property exists inside its pro prototype in this case it would be false but 
Uh, it checks if the property is defined inside the object, not in its prototype. That's why it's called has on property. So if I run this, it will give me true. The issue with this method is, uh, in order to have this method accessible, you have to have this prototype method inside this object. But there are times when a lot of people would create object using a method called object.create. So object.create method. And if I just pass null, which means this doesn't have any prototype methods, which means it doesn't have this has own property. And if I add um, its own properties, it would not be able to find this and will, won't be able to, you won't be able to call on it, right? Um, and then there are some other, other issues with this method. So that's why uh, the replacement is not a prototype method. It's an object method. Uh, object method are called on object keyword, right? So I can call the same way uh, console log and I would say object dot has own and then I have to provide the name of the object and then name of the property which is this so you can see the difference here your calling has own property which is a prototype method on this object itself here um, you are calling um, not calling on the sum object you are actually passing the object and a property inside this method. So that's the main difference. Uh, run this. I would get true for both of them, right? So this is a replacement. Again, it's not a must have feature, but it's nice to have feature. All right, so the next feature in ES 2022 is called error.cause. JavaScript now supposes an optional parameter in the error constructor called cause. Uh, and value of the cause is assigned to the error instance so that uh, the errors can be easily chained. Uh, this is very hard to understand for a lot of people because a lot of people don't use this constructor. So let me give you a simple example, which I found somewhere on the internet. So this is not my example that I created. So here, let's say if I have a function called do some work and do work, and I'm calling two separate functions. One is do some work and do more work, right? And I'm using try catch method to make sure that I can catch something. So because of the try catch method, if there's an error within this, let's say do some work, it will catch it, but the things would progress, right? And I can catch the error. And what I'll do is I'll throw a new error with some meaningful um, uh, label. And then I can pass an optional a property called cause uh, for, for this one, right? And then I'll do the same thing for the second method. When I call this do work function and in the try block and catch the, uh, the error, so it has, let's say two errors, the error message, which error occurred, right? And I can handle the the exception accordingly. Again, this feature handles this unique scenario. All right, let's quickly look at ES2023 and beyond. Uh, again, uh, we don't know exactly which feature is gonna go in which version, but here are some of the features that are upcoming. Uh, there are some array methods like uh, find last, find last index, um, the JavaScript data structure sets, uh, which, which was kind of basics for now. Uh, it's going to have a couple of more methods like union, intersection, difference, you know, like what set usually are capable of. Um, map data structure is going to also have you know, some new methods that I'm not listed here. And then there's some hatchback grammar is also coming to JavaScript. I hope you learned something new from this video. And if you did, please like, subscribe and provide a nice comment. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. And I also write a lot of Medium articles. So you can check it out. Um, you can also purchase my courses on Udemy. Uh, I have two courses, one on React and one on JavaScript. And we also provide interview training. Uh, do you dream of making a career at a leading tech companies with a lucrative package? Uh, we'll teach you how to crack tough interview questions with confidence. We'll teach you how to solve most popular and complex technical coding uh, interview questions from LitCode, Fang, and leading technology companies in three hour modular session. 
Uh, for more information uh, and free seminar, uh, please contact info at interviewness.com. And thank you.